Marhaban Bikum, I'm Sam Ross with Qasr Online. Today we're going to be discussing the definite article Aleph and Lam and the idea of definiteness more generally. Let's take a look. We're going to begin by discussing what words in Arabic are definite. And there's basically two categories of words. The first category of definite words is proper names, i.e. names of people, places, and things. And so, for example, the name Muhammad, the father of Maha, it's a definite word because we know exactly who it is and it's a proper name. And of course, Maha herself, another, in this case a female proper name, is also definite. Now, the other major category of, of definite words, and it's certainly the most common, is things that begin with Alif and Lam, which is a definite article in Arabic. It roughly corresponds to the word the in English. So, for example, consider the word Al-Kitab, the name of our textbook, that's a definite word, as is Al-Bayt, which is where you do your homework, and asaf, the classroom, where you do classroom exercises. So what are indefinite words? These are the definite words. That's really easy. Basically, indefinite words is everything else. That's not very hard, right? So if you're not a proper name, and you don't have aleph and lam, you must be indefinite. And so, for example, consider stripping these three words of their aleph and lam, and we get just the word kitab, just the word bait, and just the word saf. And we have three indefinite words. Now one of the problems students often fall into is that while they know what words are definite, they can say that word's definite and that word's indefinite, they don't really know what that means. What does it really mean to be definite? That's our next question. What does definiteness mean? The essence of definiteness is that the thing is known. Let's consider a funny example. Consider the two phrases, goods and the goods. Now of course the goods is definite and goods is indefinite. And you can feel why they're definite. If we think about that common scene that happens in Pulp Fiction and crime scenes, we have two ne'er-do-wells, they meet in some alley somewhere, and one guy says to the other, do you have the goods? Now why did he say the goods? <laughs> because he means particular goods, not any old goods. He means the Maltese Falcon or the stolen jewelry or something like that. And so that thing he's referring to, those goods, are known between the two convicts. So you can see what's going on. If he had said, do you have goods? <laughs> He'd be like, I mean, what, you want cut coat knives or something? I mean, what's going on? No, that's one example. Let's look at another example. Consider the phrase, a man and the man. What is a man? A man is a member of the class called men. It's approximately three billion people right now. If I said, if, I, if some guy broke into my home and the police said, we know who did it. It was a man. <laughs> I'd say, great. <laughs> Let me know when you know who he is. But if he said, the man, and it's one particular person, if the police says, we got the man, I say, great, I'm really excited. So you can feel the connection here. Last point to talk about is a little tricky problem with Aleph and Lam in translation. And that problem is the following. Sometimes in Arabic, a word will have Aleph and Lam, but in English, it won't. And that's kind of counterintuitive, right? Because we say Aleph and Lam means the. So what's going on? First, a few examples. The phrase, or the word Al-Adab, means the literature literally but it might be translated just as literature. Or for example, a zawaj means the marriage, but it might be translated as marriage. And al kimya which is actually a word uh, that's gone into English, you can think of a word that sounds like it, it's the word chemistry, the word chemistry in English comes from al kimya Anyways, al kimya is the chemistry, but it just becomes chemistry, what's happening? In this case, the rule is something like the following. If you are writing a sentence in English, and in English, you are not using any article whatsoever, neither an a, nor an an, nor a the, then in Arabic, you're still going to use alif and lam. And you'll discuss this more in depth in your future of your Arabic studies. Let's look at a few examples. Consider the sentence, literature is vast. And it's true. I mean, go to the literature section of like a Borders or a Barnes & Noble or some bookstore. It's overwhelming. You can never read all those books. Now, when I did this, I didn't say the literature. I didn't say a literature or an literature. Well, you... You didn't say literature for a different reason, but you didn't say any kind of article in front. So what does that mean? It means when you translate it, you're going to put an aleph and lam on the other side. So literature is vast becomes al-adab wasi. Let's do two more quick examples. If someone said marriage is beautiful, and it certainly is, how do you translate it? Okay, there's no the marriage, not a marriage, so it becomes az-zawaj jameel. And lastly, chemistry is hard. It is hard, you know, all those organic chem and those extra things you got to worry about. So what's going on? If we convert it over here, I have to add an aleph and lam, al kimya sa'ab. And that's the end of our discussion of definiteness. Thanks for joining us.